Suppose we are given the following function, where n is a natural number. And we are asked to convert this function to a recursive function. That is, we are going to create a new function g, which is equivalent to f, but recursive. A recursive function is a function that works with the association of its own values. For example, if we want to know the value g of a, what we have to do is associate it with another value g of b, where b, in most cases, is equal to a minus 1. So our goal will be to turn this into an equality. This is read as g of a is somehow equivalent to g of b. Well, the idea is that g of a is equal to an expression that includes d of b. In other words, g of a is not equal to g of b, but in its definition, g of b is going to be present. In order to do this, let's try some values. Let's try to relate g of 5 and g of 4. So g of 5 is 25 because 5 squared is 25, and g of 4 is 16 because 4 squared is 16. So we have g of 5 minus g of 4 is equal to 9. 9 is the sum of 5 and 4. Therefore, g of 5 minus g of 4 is equal to 5 plus 4. Now we can solve for g of 5. Let's try another value. Find the relation between g of 7 and g of 6. If g of 7 is 49 and g of 6 is 36, g of 7 minus g of 6 is equal to 13. Therefore, g of 7 is equal to g of 6 plus 7 plus 6. So it looks like there is a kind of pattern or a kind of relation between the function at a point x and the function at a point x minus 1. So if x is equal to 7, we can generalize g of x as g of x is equal to g of x minus 1 plus x plus x minus 1. But the truth is that this function won't work. Because we have here that g of 5 is equal to g of 4 plus 9. Okay, but what is g of 4? Well, g of 4 by definition is g of 3 plus 7. But what is g of 3? g of 3 is equal to g of 2 plus 5. But what is g of 2? And we can keep going like that, because a function like this will create an infinite chain of references. And the only way to break this chain is by setting the so-called base case. And the base case is the point where the function produces a real result. And this is a very important hint about recursive functions. We are not going to get a real result until we reach the base case. We can think of the base case like an assumption. Assumption. Something that you accept as true, without any proof. For example, g of 0 is equal to 0. This is an assumption, because we may not know what g of 5 is, or g of 4, or g of 3. But we know that g of 0 is 0, and based on that assumption, we are going to be able to solve the function at any point. For example, we don't know the value of g of 4, because g of 4 depends on g of 3, and we don't know what g of 3 is. Because g of 3 depends on g of 2, and we don't know what g of 2 is, because g of 2 depends on g of 1. But we know what is g of 1, because g of 1 depends on g of 0. And g of 0 is 0, so g of 1 is 1. And with g of 1, we can solve g of 2. And with g of 2, we can solve g of 3. And with g of 3, we can solve g of 4. And here is where things start to make sense, because a recursive function always has to define a base case. There always has to be an assumption. And now we can say that f of n is equal to g of n. Thank you for watching.